showtime here. We'll see if Death and Taxes can beat Miracles in just a moment. <laughs> Philip Joe's got a fan. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, <laughs> one, so one, one of them's his friend, and the other one's a guy playing the same deck that you that play. That is so good. You know, he's already, he, Joe already converting some of Mark's team. Both with one mana artifacts to start things off. A vial on Mark's side, a top on Joe's side. For those of you guys who don't know, Philip Schoenegger, top four Grand Prix New Jersey, uh, top 16 here this weekend with Miracles. He's a huge advocate for the deck, one of the best Miracle players in the world. Prefers Ponder to Joe's style, but they both have similar success with the archetype. Yeah, one advantage here is that is that Mark got a turn one Aether Vial. Uh, does neutralize some of the counter spells that come out of Lissette's deck and helps really mitigate uh, Terminus because he can end step creatures. Mark deciding what he wants to search for. He's going to go with a Sword of Fire and Ice. Preferring that over Jitae and a Batter Skull. So he'll shuffle up and send it back Lissette's way in just a moment here. You see the vials on one. There's the sword. Yeah, and I do think there's some pressure on Joe here to establish a countertop lock or get an early entreat. A lot of his removal is somewhat situational. You see things like Counterspell, uh, you know, Pyroblast, of course. Cards like Spell Pierce, they're not actually that great in this matchup. They don't interact well with white creatures. Obviously, cards like Terminus are just just fantastic. But he does want to close out the game because the, his a lot of, you know, his strategy of sitting back and one for one a lot of times he can get blanked there. Saw Joe spin his top on the upkeep. Make sure he drew a good card. There's a Scalding Tarn. And looks like a peel a card with top. There's that. Sack this. Somebody's got another top to play. Yeah, Joe has a second top here. Oh. Liked the card he had on top, top of his deck, so converts Divine Top into a different card. So there that is. Vile, in comes Mother of Runes. We think. Making Joe decide first before showing whether or not he has Mother Runes. A lot of times, even if he doesn't have a Mother Runes, they'll just tap the vial on end step anyway. Yeah, we watched Craig Wesco do that a lot last weekend. Very skilled Death and Taxes players. Vials up to two here for Koenig. It's interesting. So with a player like Craig, Craig Wesco, you get someone who's just a white aggro player across the board. Kind of I, not a huge... You know, Legacy is one of the many formats he plays, whereas then you get players like Mark who are just, you know, they play Death and Taxes. The reason for the activation of the Stoneforge Mystic on his own turn, which is something I actually like a lot, is because sometimes you'll see where if you wait to activate it, that's when you get blown up by Vendillion Click. So I actually like this a lot because if his plan is to put it into play and he has no other plans with his mana, then just put it into play. Yeah, play it on main phase. Joe plays three copies of Vendillion Click in the main. Yeah. Flooded Strands of Land pass the turn back. Nothing to put in with the Vial. Koenig will draw a card. Yeah, so Koenig has not really done dealt, dealt too much damage yet. This equip is going to be his first real threat. We'll see how Joe reacts to it, whether or not he can find a Swords to Plowshares. Certainly he doesn't want to actually take a hit off Sword of Fire and Ice if he can help it at all. Yeah, Swords of Plowshares is covered up pretty well by Mother of Rune, so a card like Terminus might actually have to come off here for Joe now. And Joe sacrificing a Flutter Strand, I wouldn't be surprised if it was for a basic Plains, which is going to show up, because again, searching for a Tundra against this deck that has Wasteland along with Rashad and Port is a little bit risky. So we're just going to get the basic land, probably spin the top with an island, and see if he can find a copy of Terminus. And this is what Death and Taxes can do really well, set up one good threat and protect it, and while being very disruptive in this matchup. So you see, once he gets a sword on Stoneforge Mystic, he can kind of force Joe to have a card like Terminus. You said Source to Plowshares don't work very well here. Mark, once he starts drawing extra cards, we'll start to do things like Wasteland, like Rishad and Port. Yeah, like Terminus, to clear everything up. Vile, what is it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whew, 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 whew. That is gorgeous. <laughs> so, so, yeah, the going through what happened here is that Joe only had one mana open. So part of Miracle is when you draw the card, there's a trigger that lets you cast it for its Miracle cost. With that trigger on the stack, Mark viled a Thalia into play, which means that Joe would have had to pay white colorless to resolve the Terminus. He only had one mana, which not only means he can't play Terminus, but he has to draw the card, which means yep. it's not on top of his deck anymore. That also means that to redeploy the top, he has to pay two mana. <laughs> this is just a beating 
all the way around. Yeah, it took, that was such a good play. Took five off Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. That was really nice. Absolutely. So now it's going to take some... He does have a Brainstorm in hand, but Thalia doesn't play. Everything costs so much more. Joe should still be able to reset in time before he dies, at least, to get this Terminus going. But it's going to take a lot of damage, and it's going to be a lot of cards for Mark. Krakus bounces the Thalia. Now it's a one-mana Brainstorm, so draw three cards, put two back. You have to imagine that we're going to see Terminus plays back in some capacity. Yeah, but it might have to be second from the top. If he just plays Divining Top, the exact same thing's going to happen yep. again. There's this. That's stone resolving. Well, he's already played a land for the turn, so he can't play the Flooded Strand. So yeah. He played Karakas. He has already played a land. Yep. It's so, the Flooded, yeah, it's the yeah, flooded, yeah, flooded strand. strand was yeah, the one. There we go. And that actually really does change things, because now he can't just play. He can't play the top and have two up. He can't pay for Thalia. So there's that. Pass the turn back. We're going back Koenig's way. This is going to go up to three, so that's Flickerwood's territory. There's also Bermaz and Mirren Crusader, as far as three mana spells are concerned. So the moment Mark puts it up to three, it's a window right where Joe could Terminus mm -hmm. if he wanted to tap the Divining Top. But he won't. We'll see how he chooses to do things here. It looks like Thalia will just get played again. Yeah, Thalia with Krakus in play. It's basically a free roll. Yeah, it does leave up Krakus so that if Joe goes for the Terminus, which we expect him to do, then he'll be able to save his own creature. Yeah, I like this play a lot. Was <laughs> well, that already down to eight? Those sword hits do add up. So I'm spin the top, and now he's going to draw a card here, and I, I have a feeling it's going to be Terminus, yeah? Still is. There's a chance that he was going to try to do it on Koenig's turn. But nope, goes for it main phase here. He's going to have to pay two. Uses his Caracas here, protecting himself from Wasteland. Koenig will pick up his Thalia. And this is the thing. If Koenig has a three drop, this doesn't even change the clock by very much. Yep. He can put a three drop in on end step, put Sword of Fire and Ice on it, and Joe is almost at lethal again. Mark is thinking maybe I'm supposed to vile something in now, or if I just let the resolve. He's going to let that resolve. Terminus is going to put two creatures at the bottom. There's a land. There's a flooded strand. Activate. Crack this in response. This is an aggressive play from Joe. He and I like it because he's far behind, so he he needs to hit some value here. He's gonna have been dealing click in response to the Aether Vial. The I hope is that Kunik just has one three drop. If he does, he will blank this Aether Vial activation. Yep. And two flicker. Two flicker, <laughs> two flicker was. was good try, buddy. <laughs> See if he wants to take one of them, give Kunik a new card, or if they just lets him have them both. A pretty casual match down there between these two players and the players that are watching too. There was an audible laughter among everyone down there in the feature match area after Mark showed him the two flicker wisp. This is actually lethal. So he can he puts a flicker wisp into play, puts Sword of Fire and Ice on it. It has protection from blue as a five three, swings yeah. at Joe and deals two damage off the trigger. That's seven. Yeah. As long as you know Mark sees it, and I would be very surprised if he doesn't. So I'm right there with you. Yeah, I mean he has to put put a creature into play. Yep. So he wait, I should put this equipment on my guy. Yep. Mark Koenig's going to win game number one here over Joe Lissette. Death and Tax is up a game over Miracles. As those players are going to head to the sideboard, we're going to come back to the booth because it is time for trivia one last time this weekend. It's the 12-monther. He's got the rules. I've got your very difficult question. All right. Well, this is going to be just like we've had it before. So if you've been watching the whole broadcast, you know the rules. But if you just joined us, hop over onto Twitter and follow the event here at SCG Live is our Twitter handle. And Cedric's going to ask you a question. If you believe you know the answer, tweet at us at SCG Live. Make sure you put the hashtag SCG Premium. You see it on the bottom of your screen. Have it on your tweet. And if your answer is correct at the end of the finals, you may be selected for a year's worth of SCG Premium over on our website. We, uh, we made some changes to organized play for 2015 for next year. The Open Series rents around two days, $20,000. The question is, what does first place win for an open series event next year during 2015. How much 
Money. How much money? Johnny What's Football. On the line? Money. Yeah. What do you get for first place? That's the question. Hashtag your answer with the hashtag SCG Premium as uh, it has increased quite a bit. Make sure you're following at SCG Live and we will announce the winner at the conclusion of our finals match, which currently Mark Koenig is up a game with, with death and taxes. Just doesn't lose any games. Doesn't I lose matches, doesn't lose games. Every, I, I swear, it, you know, every time I bet against death and taxes, just assume that I'm wrong, because every time I'm just like, well, it's playing against miracles. The deck has Terminus and all these things. And the Terminus blowout that game was fantastic. Looked at the top Thalia, eight. Thalia. And I remember you're like, hey, well, who do you think's gonna win this top eight? And you're like, oh, yeah. this, this is pretty hard top eight for death and taxes. Yeah. Like, oh, that means it's probably gonna win if we're saying that. Yeah, this is just how things go every time. A every time we're just like, <laughs> well, I don't know if death and taxes can beat this matchup. It's like, well, it just messes with the opponent just enough, beats lands, sure. beats um, Friedman playing his like Jeskai Stone Blade deck that had Counterbalance on top, and now he's up a game against the deck that has t four copies of Terminus and Swords of Plowshares and Pyroclasms after sideboard, as you guys will see as we head back down to the match. So Joe's got a needle, two Baneslayer Angels. Like that, that card's good against Death and Taxes, but <laughs> Mark will probably find a way to beat it. Containment Priest, Counterspell, two Fluster Storms, a Hydro Blast, two Red Blast, Wear Terror, Venser, Jace, and the two Pyroclasms that we mentioned. All right, let's start with some of the things that he can use. The two Pyroclasms, you said they are great in this matchup. Pithing Needle, not the worst. There's Cards like Aether Vial, Mother of Runes can be problematic for the Miracles deck. Imagine he'll bring that one in. Containment Priest, interesting. It does stop Aether Vial. I'm not sure if it's good enough in the rest of the matchup to board in, but we'll see whether or not he uses it. Outside of that, a lot of his things are pretty color-specific answers. You know, you see things like Hydro Blast, Red Elemental Blast. None of those work very well here. A big question, though, Bane Slayer Angel, is this a matchup where he wants to use it? It certainly is hard for a Death and Taxes deck to deal with. I mean, he doesn't want to keep in his Swords to Plowshares here. That said, Death and Taxes is also on the Wasteland Rashad and Port plan. Five is a lot of mana. Bring it in. Give it to me. This is the second match. You just want to see it. Yeah, I just want to see him cast it. Mostly because every time Patrick tells me about when he played against Joe, and obviously Patrick's playing Burn, and Joe played a Painsler Angel, Patrick's like, oh. all right, you win. That's it. Just concede. The game is over. I cannot Gotta. beat this, obviously. Sulfuric Vortex right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Graph Digger's Cage, Needle, Ratchet Bomb, two copies of this one, Cannonist, a Containment Priest, an Absolute Law, a Cop Red. Rest in peace, two Enlightened Tutors for the whole package, along with two Gut Shots, a Cataclysm, and a Council's Judgment. I actually expect to see Cataclysm and Council's Judgment come in here, among other pretty good options, but I think those are the easiest places to start. Needle, too. I agree. Cataclysm, Council's Judgment are both very good here. Mark just becomes more disruptive after board here, if anything. So even something like Ratchet Bomb might not be terrible if it gets a counterbalance off the board, but you're right. Pithing Needle's pretty good here. It gets rid of Divine, stops Divining Top, Cataclysm Council's Judgment. Those are all pretty good. If he's really worried about Pyroclasm, he can bring in Absolute Law, but Joe doesn't have the Lightning Bolts. It's probably a card that stays in the sideboard. Well, our players have been underway here in game number two in just a moment. Again, these guys all having a bunch of fun down there. Two streaming personalities on Magic Online, so you can find Joe at twitch.tv slash oarsman79. You can find Mark at twitch.tv slash bavra underscore as well. So these guys love to battle. And for Mark, European player coming over here, destroying this tournament with death and taxes. Likely had a lot of fun at Grand Prix New Jersey. You see Philip Schoenegger behind Joe. Top four to Grand Prix New Jersey with miracles. An expert of that archetype that's why he's sitting behind joe trying to learn from him maybe a little bit too about why joe plays you know when dylan clicks where philip doesn't you know right certainly gave him some outs there against um against cards like that the aether vial there and i mean unfortunately mark had two flicker wisps yeah but good against stoneforge mystic as well Joe looks like he may mulligan here. Certainly is thinking about it. He says he's going to keep. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a close one for him. It's the big bluff. It does not look happy about his hand at all. Jeez. And it's going to hang on to it, so we'll see. What was going on? What? Just a second here. No top, that's for sure. Vile or Mother? Mother. Joe, okay. much more okay with that than with the turn one Aether Vile. Yeah. Do you see our, it should make you real happy. We do see Bane Slayer Angel in the opener. Maybe even two Bane Slayer Angel in the opener. That's a hand. Now that's a hand. What if? So this is actually something which is kind of funny. So I said, like, you know, could OBS on mid-range beat Death and Taxes? And what Joe's going to do is he's going to kind of do an impression of a lot of standard decks where he's just going to, I think, make some lands and drop some Bane Slayers. And 
I wasn't kidding myself. These mid-range strategies are very difficult for death and taxes to deal with. You know, it, there are situations where a standard deck could maybe beat death and taxes. No, I agree. Couldn't even search up Sword and Fire and Ice again. I love his weapon of choice, the Stoneforge Mystic, in this matchup. A lot of players would just immediately go for Batter Skull, but I'm just not a big fan of that card in this matchup. Sword makes every single card a threat. Right. It's equip cost. And, and GTA is fine, but you know, Sword has to really just run away with the game as we saw in the last in the last one. So here's the thing. Sword hits harder than Batter Skull does. Um, you can't sure Batter Skull comes with a token, but if you think about the way that Joe answers Mark's creatures, it's not with pinpoint removal, especially not with mother runes in play. It's with terminus. And in that situation, Mark's not gonna be able to rebuy the batter skull and make another creature. Instead, he just wants to hit hard and draw more cards. Sword of Fire Nice is much better at that. Kunigel draw. It's a wasteland. This is a vile. A little late to the party, but better late than never. Yeah, still good enough in the matchup, but he's probably pretty happy to have one on turn three. We do see a pithing needle in Joe's hand, so if it becomes too much of a problem, he can get rid of the Aether Vial. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, there may be a trio of Baneslayer Angels in Joe's hand. Well, he's only got two in his sideboard. Okay, so, so it's only two. There, so can't, not th there right, can't be can't a be third three. one. There's at least one. Possibly both. He's going to search up a basic planes here. And how many swords has Mark kept in? Remember, he does he does know that Joe has Baneslayer in his sideboard. And he also knows Joe's has, you know, a card like three copies of Dillon Click and Adventure, so I imagine he's kept in some number of the removal spell. Here's a Brainstorm. So two cards are going to go back to go back here, and maybe we'll see an Arid Mace like a sacrifice. Maybe we don't. There is oh, two copies of Terminus there, so those are interesting, to say the least. Yeah, he has Pyroclasm in his hand, can put a Terminus on top of his deck. And here's what you said, Terminus can be a tough card. Yeah, he's gonna activate Stoneforge now. Make sure there's no click shenanigans just like last game. Nice, says go ahead. Do your worst. Your worst is Terminus, yep. And Kunik, you saw expecting that. Just reached for both his creatures before Joe even drew. I mean, just watching Mark play right now, and a little bit earlier, but not surprised he's undefeated. Joe successfully building up to five with just basics. Has to decide if he wants to needle here. He has needle, pyroclasm. Looks like scalding tarn and caracas. Yep, shut down the sword. Choice there. So he had a choice between sword and pivot and aether vial. Went with the sword there. Yeah, vial's just a little slow this game, you know? It's just a one right now. Next turn it'll go to two. It's just a little slow here. There's a port. That'll mess up the plan a little bit, I think. It will cost Joe a turn if Mark kind of leaves up two mana. Yeah. Could you see Thalia among the threats in Mark's hand? Yep. See if that one gets to stick. Mark doesn't have to spend too much of his mana. He can use most of his time using things like Reshod and Port and Wasteland, thanks to Aether Vial. Looks like he... Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe he wanted to wasteland to go after the Arid Mesa, which is clearly a strange play, but if you think your opponent has a good card on top of their deck, it might be a play worth making. But yeah. One combo he actually can do once his Vile gets up is he can use Rashad and Port to tap Arid Mesa and force Joe to crack it. If Joe doesn't, then they'll become tapped, and then he can wasteland the Mesa. Going to go after a mana here, and Joe's going to sacrifice his Arid Mesa. Joe does have land number six, so as long as Mark doesn't have more copies of Shot and Port, Joe can still get to Baneslayer mana. Planes will come in. And it's time to draw one. Joe knew the top card was deck, so he drew a copy and treat the angels. Maybe one of the poorer draws in his deck at this point. Well, at least at five mana, Entreat the Angels is still... Well, I was going to say at five mana, it still makes a 4-4 four, four Thalia. It does make it cost an additional. Mm-hmm. Joe just buying time with land drops here. Okay, there's Tarn. Let's see what this is going to go get. Looks like maybe he's opening the door to the Wasteland. I think he's searching for a Tundra. He could also get a Mountain. He does have a Pyroclasm in hand. Okay. 
going on all basics still. And is Thalia enough to force pyroclasm from Joe? Looks like the answer is yes. It's a three mana pyroclasm too because of Thalia being in play, so. Sure. You're just Why not? Doing a lot of one for one right? I mean, when you have Bane Slayers, yeah. Yeah. That's all you want to do is just make sure you don't die. You cast Bane Slayer Angel, and chances are if you do that, you probably win. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Do, did Mark keep a Swords of Plowshares and is one in his hand? Because if not, if you played, didn't play Standard three years ago, raising Bane Slayer Angel is just not an option. There's Vile. Best turn back. Port. Yep, tap a white. Gotta keep you off Bane Slayer. <laughs> ah, well, can't yeah. keep him off that one. Yeah, I mean, okay, so you succeed in keeping him off Bane Slayer. However, there's some damage that's been done then. There's Caracas. Wabam. There we go. 5-5, five, five, flying, first strike, lifelink, protection from demons and dragons. Oh. Wins a lot of fights, too. Vile's up to 3-1. and one. I remember my favorite thing is right after they printed this card, and it was very good, they printed a demon that comes into play and destroys an angel, and you just thought, oh, well, that's that's adorable. Yes, the uh, the Halo Hunter. Right. Yeah. He was not very good at his job. <laughs> to say the least. That's the biggest flavor fail ever. <laughs> like, it's like the only angel you need to kill is the one angel you can't. Yeah. What do we got to cast here? Yeah. How is Mark going to deal with this 5-5? Five, five? I'll put you to the ultimate test. That's the thing. I mean, it's just bigger than everything Mark has. Take care of Caracas. And Bane's are doing number. He has Brahmas. He has a lot of great creatures, but, you know, once again, it's it's very hard to race Bane Slayer. It's a 10-point life swing every turn. Yeah, we'll see if Stoneforge resolves and if he can search or not. Mark will be able to get his creatures out pretty quickly. You see him casting Stoneforge here. He can vile in Brahmas. No search. Just pass. Draw a card. He has Batter Skull in his hand, and GT might be out of his deck. Batter Skull, yep. Batter Skull is in his hand, and it would make sense that GT is not here. Yeah. There's the attack. Five point life swing. Put you to 15, myself up to 22. And now it might be Jay's time. Yep, yep. The Mind Sculptor. There you have him. And we've gotten to a point that's getting late in the game that Joe's Haymakers are all starting to land. Well, this is actually kind of interesting because, like, Joe's going to brainstorm here, and Mark actually has the ability, depending on what Joe finds, right? But Mark is really, like, if he rips the swords, it's like, sword your Bane Slayer, kill your Jace, now I'm perfectly fine. Right. Joe's found a replacement Jace, but even then, Mark would be so have so much on the board that it would probably still be advantage for him. Yeah, because in comes, in's going to come from us. Vile's going to be at 3 and 2. He's got a port to mess with the white mana for Entreat if he chooses to. And again, if he can find a source of plowshares, he can kill the Baneslayer Angel, and then he's fine. At the very least, Jace is going to take an attack here from Bramaz. And the token's going to come in. Now, the token can attack a target different than Jace. Yep. <laughs> Taking a look at the new Jeff Foster cat token. <laughs> That's right. Vigilance. One of the judge rewards for Star City Games. So Jace is going to bite the dust. Damage is going to come through straight to Joe. We'll see if Mark is crafty enough here, as there's a Flagstones to shut down the white source, because I believe on top of Joe's deck is a copy of Entreat the Angels. And if that resolves for, you know, a large amount, then, then the game's probably over. Yeah, Mark could Cataclysm, I suppose, in yeah. that situation, but that's about it for Sweepers on his side. Batterskull's going to come into play. Yeah. He does need to port there. Batterskull is one way to race Bane's Lair Angel. Yep. There's a drum token. Pass the turn back. What are we tapping? Source Very smart. Source. Entreat was the draw. It doesn't fall for that trick. And if you're Joe, do you continue to attack? You're only getting in one damage, so the answer is probably no right now. Yeah, the other card in Joe's hand, he's got a Terminus and a Jace, so he could put Terminus back on top of the deck if he wants to, but 
I'm, I mean, I wouldn't be feeling great if I was in Joe's position right now, even though I have a Baneslayer Angel and I'm playing another Mythic Rare in Jace. Well, as long as Joe can brainstorm into another white source here, things are probably great. Yeah. You can get that white source, play it this turn, put Entreat on top. Life's good. We're going to go on summoning by Germ Token. Joe, with a different approach altogether, is going to get rid of the germ token. And okay. then pass. Yep. This is a huge turn if you find swords. Like. Well, I'm interested, right? Because if Mark gets a fifth land, Mark can actually just move the Batter Skull over to Bramaz. But Joe might be fine with that, right? Because then you're not tapping his lands. And then he can, you know, hard cast a Terminus, which he can't do now. So he right. might be leading him into that play. Yeah, there's the fifth land. Yep. Some a wasteland added there, but Mark's going to make that play exactly. One way to get through a Baneslayer is to just make a larger creature. I do want to see how he's going to attack, which is this. Because he's got to get Jace off the board. He has to get Jace off the board. So all three creatures at Jace yeah. would take down Jace. I think that's super necessary. Because if he... You know, if he just says, like, Bramaz, attack your Jace, and, like, the cat token attack your Jace, and doesn't kill it, I think that's bad news. It looks like it may have gone at Joe, actually. Nah. No. Yeah, okay, it's just go. go. There yeah, you go. All right. it's gotta go. So it looks like Baneslayer blocks a cat token. Yeah. Jace takes all the rest of it. Yep. See, now the window's open for Joe to, you know, cast Terminus and clean this board up, but... But even then, it's not apparent that Joe's ahead. He doesn't have a Jace or something like Ooh, that. Ooh, entreats for four. And that was, that was the play all along, is that Joe actually just had a second entreat. Gotcha. And I originally thought it was fishy. I was thinking, well, why didn't Joe brainstorm there? It seems like that's what he really needs to do. Joe, one step ahead, had a second entreat. Nice, comfortable attacking, too. Get you for five. Gain some life, deal you some damage. Mark, Mark, and see, the only thing is Mark was sandbagging a creature. I think Mark was expecting him to Terminus, and he actually has a copy of Mirror Crusader in his hand. He would have been able to go, okay, everything's dead. Violent Mirror Crusader, equip the Batter Skull. hi -ya. That's not the case anymore. There is the Crusader. That's the last card in his hand. Pretty good army here. Crusader, obviously great with the Batter Skull, but can it swing through all these angel tokens? Remains to be seen. It can take on a lot of them. Three, to be exact. I'm really starting to... I mean, uh, slowly but surely, I'm starting to come around to death and taxes. Oh, so many... I mean, one of your first decks actually was White Weenie, right? Kithkin yeah. was right up your alley. But it's just like... this. I mean, this is just this deck is miles better than Kithkin, obviously, because, I mean, it's a legacy deck. But it's just... I mean, to be able to slog through, like, Terminus... Two Jaces, a Baneslayer Angel. And an Entreat. <laughs> yeah, which, like, if you cast any one of those cards against Githing, you're just dead or whatever. Like, this deck is way better than I think it is. Crusader's holding Batter Skull. It's in tack here for, it's, I mean, it's a 6-6 six, six double striker with Life Link and all that jazz. So now we're in, like, a very unique racing situation. And I'm not, so Joe could have traded three Angels for that, but it looks like he's not going to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. He doesn't want to just yet because he doesn't have to. I think if he can just find a removal spell instead for the Mirren Crusader, it's a much better situation than trading most of his board for it. He'd be so far ahead after that. You know, wear tear for Batter Skull would work. The Swords for Crusader. Eventually, he will have to block it. It's not the race is no longer in his favor while that attack's happening. Yeah. Let's see just how he decides to attack. Remember, Joe does have terminus in hand. It's very hard though to want a terminus right after you made sixteen power. He's getting a little aggressive now. Looks like a bunch of angels are attacking, including Bane Slayers. So that's five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17. So here's actually a line that Joe can take, which is pretty heads up. He can swing for 17. He can just chump Mirren Crusader with the Angel. Yeah, Mark will gain 6. He'll go to, well, unfortunate number is 18. 
And Joe, yeah, Joe will take a lot of damage, but that's probably fine. Joe then can swing back for another 17. Or maybe just in that situation, a 12. You know, he can just chump and race. Because if you chump Mirren Crusader, Mark only gains 6 instead of the usual 12. Okay. And then if Mark does something to change the equation, maybe the race doesn't work anymore, well, you have Terminus to fall back on. Yeah, he's always got the reset button, which is really nice. The reset button is a little dangerous, obviously, because Mark can just say, okay, I'll, I'll start the advantage first by filing something in, but he always mm -hmm. does have that option. Yeah, Mark can also port Joe off second white, so the Terminus option is fragile. Yeah. But the race and chump plan, as it stands now, should work. Decisions here for Koenig. Don't have a great look at his hand. He's reaching for some other creatures, which I do like that part of this. Yep. Just everybody swinging on Mark's side. Yep. And once Mark realizes Joe's strategy, this is a great attack. Two cards. See Joe's cards. Entreat Terminus. And what looks like a spell pierce. The funny thing, I guess, I, I was going to say the funny thing here is you know, if Mark ever draws a copy of Cataclysm, my oh my, is that a disaster? So it's actually not going to race and jump. He's going to just kill off the Bermaz and let Mark gain another 12. Yep, there's a third vial. And Mother Runes, empty-handed. Kick it back. Well, this is dangerous, Mother of Runes being able to give Mirren Crusader protection from white. Yep. May force Joe's hand and he Mark's gonna tap Joe's white mana and he may just he may be stuck here. He can life gain up to thirteen, but he will I'm not sure he has enough blockers. Yeah. <laughs> Saw Joe Flair type house there a minute. Maybe he was supposed to chump like you mentioned. Here comes Nope. Well he's in a tough spot now that he didn't. Yep. In. Goes up to 13. His draw was Force of Will. That one's not going to help very much. No, not with all those vials out there. No, he's going to need another white mana source next turn. Or source to plowshares. I think he can survive this turn. He can. It's only 12 damage off the Mian Crusader. But after that, he's down to one top deck. There actually are some cards that Mark can draw here to get the job done, but I think what he's got on the board is actually pretty good. There's an attack again for 12. And that puts Joe to 1. And this could be it. Some excellent maneuvering here over on Mark's side. Another port's good. Another port's excellent. Yeah. This takes away all of Joe's outs, I think. Yeah, I think so. Because he, he, he gets to tap all of his white mana. Yeah. The other cards generally don't matter. I don't know if he's got another Jace to draw to, but yeah, I don't think it matters. Joe draws a tundra. tundra. There's the white source, but he needed it last turn. Yeah, there's that. Brings Terminus forward in his hand, but yeah, that's going to do it. There Mark Cooney's going to win this match here over Joe Lissette. Two games to zero. And for our number one overall seed with death and taxes, he is your legacy open champion. And his friends are happy about it here in Richmond. And a well-played second game there. If you want to see a primer on death and taxes in the Miracles matchup, you you should you need to turn to that game. Yeah, I don't use the words perfect very much as far as play is concerned because Magic is such a hard game. It's very difficult to ever play a perfect game, obviously. But if you you know if you dial it back and you watch that match again. That's a master class not to play Death and Taxes. Yeah, well, Joe had so many options here. You realize, so Joe resolves Baneslayer Angel, Entreat for four Angels, has Terminus, one Terminus he resolves. He has a second Terminus in his hand, and Mark gets that game. And it's not that, and it, it's just slight edges at every step, you yep. know? If there's no one point at which you really say, oh, okay, this is, this, this was the backbreaking play. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's, that's how you play that deck. And I mean, surprise, surprise, my prediction is wrong about death and taxes again. This is just maybe a running <laughs> thing here at CG Live, but it's just like, this is just how it's done. This is how it is done every single time. And, you know, you would think the Miracles is a bad matchup, but to Mark's credit, I imagine he has played this matchup a lot because, well, look at the people he's with. Right. Half of his playtest group here is on Miracles. And he